Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, go live. So we are live right this second. So I want to share it to everyone's uh, pages. So I want to go ahead and uh, switch the microphones. I do all I can to deal with this addiction in me. I can't stay the same But this is that in my pain It's trying to just, just to kill me Good evening, good evening, good evening Welcome to another episode of tonight's U-Turn show Here on WBIS Awesome Radio 106.9 FM here in Greenville, North Carolina Also 100.3 WILT in Rocky Mount I was certainly a uh, uh, glad to, to to have you guys on there today uh, if you have not already gone to our website please visit the website www.wbisawesomeradio.org where you can download all of our apps on the google store the apple store and alexa also uh, this is a interactive show so feel free to call in i want to put the the number up there on the screen there it is so it's 252-756-2008 also um you can also uh visit us all of our shows on roku uh tv uh the awesome radio channel so tonight uh we have a, a very uh very much needed show uh and i have a distinct panel of guests uh here to talk about a situation uh that 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 transpired uh in goldsboro north carolina uh if the radio listener audience doesn't know uh and, and also the social media audience uh, last week in Goldsboro, North Carolina, uh, the, the media is classifying it as a mass shooting uh, where uh, one individual lost their life, a 14-year-old girl, Joanna Pearsall, and I do want to extend my condolences to her family, uh, lost her life at a pool party uh, with a bunch of teenagers, and, and actually she was one of, once again, five or six people uh, who got who got shot, and uh we are we are we are we are having this show to kind of address the the state of the black community uh where this 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 activity uh has become so prevalent uh we have become normalized to the violence and we have also almost becoming acceptant to it uh whereas you know we don't see uh any way to to uh change the narrative so uh tonight we have these uh the these two gentlemen uh, and this this one lady to to interact with and also uh, discuss you know the root of the problem uh what can be done about the you know the the, the upsurge of, of violence uh, not only in goldsboro and the black community in general uh and also just just different different takes and different uh insights uh on the happening so i do want to welcome all four of my guests uh pastor tyrone morgan uh, out of lagrange north carolina i uh, also elder mike Bess. Uh, from Goldsboro, North Carolina, and also our sister Kreisha Fussell um, from uh, Woman to Woman out of Goldsboro, based in Raleigh as well. So uh, we have three uh, distinct guests, and I'm just going to give you all the floor. Um, you know, e everybody is, is is very much familiar with the situation, so uh, I'm just going to allow you all uh, to, um, you know, give some insight and some input on, on what you think. Uh, you know is, is 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 the solution or, or what do you think is the cause or you know what what do y'all think is going on that make you know our youth uh so so um so 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 inclined uh to participate in this type of behavior oh well i go first well, 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 no well, first doubt. All, well first of all richard um i definitely thank thank you for having me on the show tonight um and 
know, you know, there has been times that um that I do, you know, I have been in the community, I have seen a lot of things in the community, and you know, my thing is the hope is gone. A lot of times we have to realize that our children, because we're from government, it's a smaller place, we have a bigger impact on our kids than what we think. That's where the snitching comes from. And that's where all the things come from where you don't supposed to tell. That just comes from generations going down from when I was out in the street and I was doing my thing, you know. So what we have to do is, and, and you know, this is just my opinion. I think the major problem is the single homes with the ladies, and we need the men in the community to really step up and be counted you know a lot of times what happens is if it's not your child it's not your problem but this is the thing that people does, don't, don't realize it may not be your child today but it may be your child's child or your child's child's child you know tragedy will find you you know so you have to be renewed first by the transforming of your mind so first thing that we have to do is we have to be we have to begin to let the kids know that we are there and we do care and we are invested in their future give them something to do they hang the street we used to, to the center we used to have black family day which i talk about the thing that we're trying to do for the community coming up on the 10th of june that i spoke with you about so what we have to do is that as a black people we cannot continue to sit around and wait for the police and, 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 and everybody else to step in and try to save our kids and i think as in this season that we need our men to be on the forefront they need to stand and they need to be counted i definitely certainly agree with that 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 is one uh one major major factor uh in uh the the uh, i i guess decline of the black yeah. community where we don't have any strong men uh a lot of even you know back in my day there was a lot of single parent households but we had strong men in the community uh that would you know take those gentlemen uh, who did not have fathers uh, under their wings and, and and not let them roam the streets uh, without any guidance or, or without any discipline so we're definitely going to touch on that uh, uh later on and i actually have uh my brother uh john lane just joining us from the glocks down movement uh welcome we are we're our actually already live on the air and we've already be begun discuss discussion uh you know what we uh the topic is you know about about the deaths in, in the community and so uh we we've already started talking about you know how we can uh we can we we can pretty much uh affect change so i'm, I'm gonna go to mr mike Biss uh real quick and i'll, I'll come back to the other gentleman uh, and get his perspective and points of view on you know the topic. Yeah, I, I, I can I can I can only concur with what um, Sister Cretia said, um, specifically with um, men really getting in place and, and and doing what's necessary to to give guidance. Um, the Bible says, and I'm paraphrasing it, um, that anytime you want to do damage to uh, anyone's home, the first thing you have to do is bind up the strong man. Um, on, and man. so once yeah. um, the, the strong men have been bound up and taken out of place, um, then ultimately the children become displaced. Uh, I, I believe as a, a father of five myself um, that it's our responsibility as men to give identity to our children. Um, and if the man is not there to give the children their identity, then um, they'll seek to get that identity from somewhere. So we live in a society that will give them everything that is uh, deleterious. It will give them everything that is dysfunctional. It'll give them everything that uh, will cause them not to be who it is that God designed them to be. But ultimately, it does start um, with men being in place. Um, right. I think what has happened down through the years is, is that um, <clears throat> through the promotion of uh, illicit lifestyles, through the promotion of sin, through the acceptance of uh, and this happened this happened as of late like over the course of the last maybe 50 years uh, yeah. because even if you go all the way back to um times where um people in our community were oppressed as a family they still did everything they could to stay together as a unit um mm -hmm. this is the reason why um they understood that them coming together and being a unit not just for their own home but for the entire community they began to police their own communities um, because there was always a strong man just about in every house, just about on every corner, 
making sure that the kids stayed on a straight and narrow. Now, of course, there were some that strayed away, but for the most part, um, there were people that were, that were in place to make sure um, that we did what we needed to do. It was like, you know, years ago, I remember hearing my mother talk about how if her or her brothers um, misbehaved at somebody else's house, they got beat at their house, and then they right. called down and told their mother what they did. And then when they got that, now we live in the age of That's people right. that have the not my baby syndrome. So it's like, mm -hmm. they live with you, you know their behavior pattern, but you don't want anybody else to correct them but you. But what That's happens right. if you're not correcting them while they're with you, then whenever they get with somebody else and they begin to misbehave, then they begin to develop habits of not operating based upon structure and doing what's right. So I, I, I completely agree with what she um, started the conversation off with is that men definitely have to get back in place and have to begin to follow the roles that God put us in place to do. To yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Mr. Morgan, uh, we, we're going to come to you because, like I said, you, you, you do a lot of work and have been doing a lot of work in the, the county of LaGrange and in, in, the, in these situations. And uh, what, what is your insight and input you know, on the topic of hand so far? So I think one of the biggest things that we face in our community is, <clears throat> and I'm going to say it and don't mean it no kind of way, but I think with the absence of men being in the house, <coughs> you, have, you have over mothered sons. So, when, <clears throat> so, and what I mean by that is that there were certain things when my dad was military, there were certain things I just didn't do. Mm -hmm. because my dad didn't allow us to do them things and so my dad gave me responsibilities at a very young age i was made to cut grass at eight nine ten years old i was working a summer job because my dad what he told me my dad always told me this a man that don't work won't eat that's right so i think uh <clears throat> when you get to these mothers mm -hmm. some of them tend to think that their sons or their boyfriends and so they treat them a certain kind of way, you know, whenever they do something wrong, they want, they don't want to be corrected. And so mm -hmm. over mothering it, and it's not their fault. I will say that the men, we need to take our position, but I've just noticed you will see, I've been at the gas station, the mama get out, pump the gas with her 12 and 13 year old son as big right. as me sitting in right. the car, watching her <laughs> pump gas. So right. what is she Absolutely. teaching him? Right. What is he being taught in that moment that women take care of? He go to the grocery store. He won't even go get, uh, he get everything out the bag when they get the bags get in the house. You know, I, I'm a firm believer in telling like, you got these boys, they need to be doing stuff. They need to be taking right. the trash out. They need to be cutting grass. They need to be <laughs> pumping gas. You need them teaching responsibility because a man without, when you can tell when kids are, when men, especially young men, I'm talking about young men, you can tell when they don't have responsibility because they always, they have a certain attitude about them. They don't yeah. care about mm -hmm. stuff. Um, yep. They don't have, they normally don't have respect for women when they have that mm -hmm. type of attitude. So mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest things that I've noticed. Um, and I try to correct it as much as I can. Mm -hmm. I happened to be at the gas station one day and a little boy, nine or 10 years old, he got out the car, pumped the gas for his mama. And I didn't have a $10 in my pocket. I said, young sure. man, here, thank you for pumping the gas for your mom. But I think it's because, and another thing I, that I've noticed too is that we have become so culturized and we skip, I call the Bible my instruction manual, but we become so cultural that we think everything we should do should be of all money. And so we so hard about trying to get money mm -hmm. and get nice things to give our kids that we don't have the time to give that's our right. kids. And so wow. that's, that's the couple of things that I've really noticed. Yeah, and actually, that 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 is what our sister Gaines said. There are a lot of parents who would rather be a friend to their child than a parent. Every parent should know what is in and going on with their child's life, and that and that goes to the point of once again everybody having to chase the bag or you know having to work and be away from them, uh, which pretty much leads kids uh, these days to their own devices, uh, mm -hmm. which is being raised by the internet uh you know youtube uh, certain you know certain music things of that nature that's going to lead them in the wrong path mr lane Amen. Uh, let, let's let, 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 let's hear you know your your input on you know the, the root of the issue okay uh god bless y'all first and foremost bless uh, you, sir. Part, How you know, part sir? Of my this. i caught it late i was actually looking <laughs> to come through text 
My fault. Right. That's all right, bro. Listen, I we found God right. be we all the glory. Yeah. Right? Yes. The enemy don't get no victory in this. Okay. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to add in. I know I'm a little bit late, so I wanted to add on to what um brother um brother Mike was saying and uh, a little bit what brother Tyrone was saying um about what uh sister uh Fussell uh, uh sister Fussell was saying. Uh, as far as men need to be present in the home. Um, this is something we can all agree with. Um, it's an absolute fact that men need to be present in the home, but we also need to be present where we can be present, right? Yeah, that's true. That's you know true. what I mean? So so a lot of a lot of men see kids uh, misbehaving today, kids that were actually listening, if you would just take the time out to talk to them Absolutely. and try to put yourself in a place yeah. where you can, you can identify with him. Mm -hmm. Because our reality is men are not in the home. Mm -hmm. Our reality is these things are happening because of that reason. So we have to focus more on the voice that they hear opposed to the voice that's absent. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the voice that they hear are the ones, the difference in this generation and us is that we were fiercely independent. Everybody that hung with me was a king. There were no paupers. There were no peasants. You know what I'm saying? For lack of a better term. Yeah, absolutely. But these young these young men today listen to people, and people tell them what to do. They give them instruction. Yeah. So we have to learn to concentrate on the ones that has the voice in their ear, because in most cases, these men that were once like them have grown up to a better place. Absolutely. These men now have kids of their own. These right. men not even have wives. They want to do better. Right, mm -hmm. they still have, they have the comp they have the power to control the faction of what we're seeing, and, and 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 that's one of the things that I think that we need to to focus more on. Um, uh, and we will get a chance. Um, I'm sure we will. But 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 that is something that 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 does not need to be disregarded. Um, it is very very important mm -hmm. that we get to the ones. To, in today's crime, you can't just tell your kids don't. Right. That has to be an incident of why not. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if you can't in some way identify with the young kids, they're not going to listen to you anyway. So that's right. Right? And the power that we have collectively, uh, especially those of us have been these kids at one time, right, is my ability to be able to still reach the streets. Absolutely. I love the Lord. Um, I, I am going to say I'm saved, born again, mm -hmm. but I still got my ear to the world because that's where I come from. That's and right. it's very important, especially in this climate and what we're mm -hmm. trying to do. Um, I want to add to what Tyrone said when he when he was talking about um, um, over mothering, and, uh, and 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 it's very true, you know. And, and and that goes back to that thing that Brother Mike said about men not being in the home. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these mothers raising these young men with the best they can do, but you know, with this, with today's climate of so many things are accepted, you say like, you know, everybody's talking about the teacher that had the scuffle or, or, and the altercation with the student, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and 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 I can't help but to be um, uh, 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 discouraged and, and, and disheartened by you mean the abundance of people that took the child side as opposed to seeing a child that rebelled against an adult. You know, there were certain things that we didn't do. Like you just said, well, there were certain things. We didn't do. That's right. We just didn't do it. That's and right. one of them was talk back to a teacher. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 never mind trying to try to take some or, or, or putting our hands on one. So I, I think you know what I mean. It's, you know what I mean, I, it, there's a lot of work that's got to be done, um, but we're here for that. And 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 piggybacking off of that, you know, that situation where, um, it, it, it and that was so strange to me because you know coming from Friday where where all of the care was on you know how much we have to do for our youth, uh, you know we have to pray for our youth. Uh, you know, these babies are in such danger. You know, what is going on there? You know, there's lack of men. There's lack of guidance. There's lack of this, lack of that. Then fast forward to Monday when that video was released. Then it's all, 
oh, these kids are bad as I don't know what. I would have beat the child, too. I would have did this. And it just seems so contradictory to me mm-hmm. how, in one instance, we can see that there is definitely a problem in our society. Mm-hmm. Children are handling guns. Children are killing each other. Mm-hmm. And then the same thing that we see with, with the out-of-line child, we're going to once again say, well, these kids are bad and we there ain't no hope for them. We can't be that double-minded. I think that's that we so true. double-minded true. as a community. It was just baffling to me how in one mm-hmm. instance we can have so much sympathy for the little girl who was killed, but this mm-hmm. little girl who obviously has mm-hmm. some issues whether they're home, whether they're from discipline, yeah. whether there's anger issues, and we yeah. just condemn this little child. And yeah. once again, she was wrong, but I'm saying we have to say, okay, well, th- that is a problem in our community yeah. that allows children to act in that in, 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 in that manner. So um, what do you say about the, the overall fickleness? Uh, uh, that's all I can say. You know, how we yeah. are wade from one day to the next on mm-hmm. on the next topics when we can't even focus on you know one thing mm-hmm. at a time which is really much the betterment of our community not who's wrong or who's right you know who, right. who should do it. but we just have a problem in our community where young adults are not respecting uh, respecting adults and we got to take our first commercial break so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna come right back y'all stay with us we're gonna keep the conversation going during the radio commercial break 106.9 awesome radio The Bible was right. This is Ken Ham, CEO of the ministry that built a full-size Noah's Ark south of Cincinnati. Can y'all hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. All right. Okay. So yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. What What do y'all think about that situation? Well, you know, we just to the next trending thing and and, yeah. and, it's, and, and we're sort of like cheers in, in, in that regard mm-hmm. I, all, all the way on my facebook book time i just saw people just mm-hmm. commenting and commenting mm-hmm. all day mm-hmm. like if you put some that much energy into solving the problems that we have mm-hmm. we would have the problems yeah this is the thing richard that i'm going to say about that situation because i posted on my page i've been in a situation like that mm-hmm. I, used, I i was a long-term sub at goldsboro high school for about seven years when I say long term, that means I had a classroom, somebody over me that was helping me get the lesson plan and the grade and everything, but I was there. And I had a situation in my class that there was a child there that had stolen another child's cell phone. She was saying that she didn't take the cell phone. So what I did was I got the child that said that her cell phone was taken. I said, well, take my phone and you call your cell phone and let's see if it rings. The cell phone rung and it rung on the inside of the little girl bag that she said had took the phone. (laughs) So when I told her to give the phone, when I told her to give the phone over, she reached in her bag, she gave the phone over, but you have to look at the whole scenario. Now, all the kids are in the classroom. It's kind of like she's embarrassed. Mm -hmm. So Mm when she took the phone out of the bag, she also took out her book. And she was coming for me. Oh, she was coming for me. She was hot. Yes, yes, one, like, you know, one second, one second. Hold that, hold that story right there. I'm gonna switch back over to the radio station. I can't hear you. Yeah. Can't hear you, Richard. He ain't even looking. Yeah, he might be talking to them and then bring us back in. Oh, uh, okay. Well, we, we still should hear him, though. He like he low or something. Yeah, I can hear it. I can hear it back barely. Like like background. Mm-hmm. Mike, can you hear um, Richard? Oh, yeah. My fault. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back here now. All right. Yeah, 1061 and Awesome Radio. Uh, and And sister of Flusher was just telling us about a situation she had with a student uh, in the school. Uh, uh, You left off when the student was coming for you. Yeah, so Uh, she had gotten her, she had returned, she had got the cell phone out of the bag, but she also grabbed her her social studies book, big social studies book. And she was was mad because not everybody in the class is laughing, she's embarrassed. You know, so the situation, it took a turn really quick. So she said, I'm going to hit you in your face. 
you know, this so and so, but you know, and I remain, you know, I am from the street, you know. And I look down and I said, Now, listen, I said, Now, if you want to act like an adult, I said, I'm gonna treat you like an adult. I said, Because if you hit me with that book, it's gonna be on up in here. And I just, that's all I said. And I kept my straight face and she kind of backed down, right? But let's say she wouldn't have backed down. My take on things like that is that if you're in a situation, it happens every day. Mm-hmm. A situation can go wrong in 1.3 seconds. That's right. There's a lot of people that's locked up for murder that didn't intentionally mean to kill anybody. Right. So we have to, when we watching videos, we have to remember that stuff happened in real time. So we watching the videos, yeah. that stuff happened probably in 2.3 seconds. So if you have a child coming at you, coming behind your desk, number one, you're a substitute, so you're not really properly trained. You know, if the criteria haven't changed since I've been summoned, you're not properly changed to handle that type of aggression, number one. Okay, number two, you don't know that lady. You don't know what she kind of day she had. You don't know what she been through. You don't know what she going through. So to sit here and say, well, I would, you don't know what you would have done. Because I cannot sit here and tell you, if she would have hit me in my face with that book, as a woman of God, I'm not going to sit here and lie before God and say, well, I just would have called the principal. I don't know what would have happened because I would have been in the moment. The thing yeah. about it is everybody want grace, but nobody don't want to show no grace. Let's tell the truth. How yeah. many people, if you do your research, how many people that never committed a crime, not even a misdemeanor, that got in a situation and end up stabbing and killing somebody that don't even have the heart to stab and kill? Things can happen and things can go wrong. If she's not properly trained, trained to handle those type of situations, which they're not, because the only thing you have to do is fill out your application, take it over to the board. They look at it, make sure you don't got no charges and, you know, go through a little stuff and you in there. So versus a teacher like Keisha Smith has been teaching for 25, 30 years. So my take on it is I think we do a lot of judge. We have a lot of opinion on what we would do if that was me. You don't know what you would do because if you are backed up against the wall and you are feeling threatened and things don't start to happen in 1.3 seconds, you got a gun and you're not a murderer or a killer. I have a record. Can you say you won't shoot? No, you can't. People in jail, they go to jail for it every day. Right. So we have to be able, the main thing that I'm saying is that it's not about who's right or wrong. Everybody want grace, but ain't nobody willing to extend no grace. And in order for God to give you grace, you got to be willing to extend it to somebody else. And that's just how the cookie crumbles. So instead of being right, wrong, or indifferent, the thing, a situation happened that got out of hand. So let's spend time figuring out what we need to do as a community so we can de- so we can deal with not just that situation that we can kind of try to work with getting the situation. Has anybody reached out to the board to find out the criteria of being a substitute teacher? Has anybody put forth the effort to see what kind of training are they getting to de-escalate the situation instead of posting on Facebook what they would or wouldn't do? Let's do something. When you see something, say something. But if you see something, say something. Let's do something. That's going to yeah. matter. Can I add? Uh, can I add to what she's saying real quick? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to. I want to hit on a couple of points. The first point I want to hit on that she said right at the end about there is nothing cool about the people uh, are, are killed. Um, you know what I mean? And, and and didn't even plan to do it. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I I I've known people um, that still fight to this day to get out of the penitentiary. They killed somebody at 14 years old, about around the same age that little girl was. Mm-hmm. They killed somebody at 14 years old and, and, want, and begging for an opportunity to get out and, and, and get his life back. I, I've met several people like that. and But I wanted to add, too, that one of the reasons that schools are like they are now, because it's commonplace that we hear about teachers assaulting, students are talking about teachers, teachers respond, all kinds of stuff going on. And a lot of that stuff, we got to remember, you know, when I was coming up, they had corporate discipline in school. You know, they took out prayer out of school. They took out a lot of the things that were in place um, in school, they don't do anymore. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and and there are things in school that shouldn't be there. Like, I mean, what purpose really, honestly, does a cell phone serve? Except for when the students, maybe when you get out of class and, right. then, and then you'll reissue your phone. But in the classroom, a, a phone don't have no right in the no purpose and it's too distracting. Period. It's too distracting. And, and 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 listen, the child, I think, I think we have to be empathetic toward both. That's um right. 
in some capacity, you know what I'm saying? Because we don't, I don't know what's going on in that child's home. I don't know what made her act out like she did. But I know that good parenting uh, uh, doesn't uh, cause those responses. And I'm not saying that our parents aren't good parents. I'm just saying that there is a breach where you got a child that young willing to try to assault a school teacher. And, and, and like, 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 like Sister Fussell said, um, if this teacher would have had a little bit more training, maybe she could have used That's different, right. uh, a, a, a different tactic, right? And it wouldn't have got out of hand. But That's right. you know what would have happened at the same time? Little girl would have had a weapon. It's just, it's yep. just. A lot we we got to take, we got to take our last station break. Uh, but we're going to be right back here on one hundred six point nine Awesome Radio, uh, the U Turn Radio Show. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. So, yeah, that's, uh, you know, we, we I, I don't want to get too deep into that, you know, back yeah. and forth yeah. situation because, you know, that's that's just up for debate. You know, I just brought it up just to, you know, show that's how cool. our mindset changed from one day to the to next. The you, know, I think that, you know, that's that we can talk about that debate all day. But what what did you have, have to say, you know, about the, the initial subject, uh, Mr. Best? Um, when, 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 whenever I saw it, um, it kind of, I guess it kind of hit close home to me because my daughter is a, um, is a high school English teacher. And oh, so, wow. Like, mm -hmm. um, and, and so there, there, there are some days where she doesn't live with us, but she'll come home, come over to the house. And there's some days where she comes home in tears oh, wow. um, because having to deal with high school students, like on a Monday, she could seem, it seems as if she's making some progress with one of the students that may be mm -hmm. trouble. And then she puts a bandage on a, a, a certain aspect of that child's life. They go home and the good that it appeared that she did was stripped away as soon as they walk in the front door. So now here's a child that seemed to be progressing on Monday, comes back on Tuesday, and it's like the conversations that they had never even took place. But to the point that uh, Brother John made, um, she said in her classroom, she essentially whenever they come in cell phones go away that's she right said, I, keep a I keep a desk full of cell phones mainly mm -hmm. because like you said there's no need for you to have that while the lesson is going on and so and 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 to your point um sister Keisha, i think um more more probably could have been done in terms absolutely. of the training to diffuse situations like that absolutely but in, in in the moment it's fight or flight it it's like you know, it's, 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 it's either one of those situations to where it's right. a place that when, when when it gets when it gets thick, I run. Or that's right. That teacher appeared not to be the type that will run. That's <laughs> right. That's right. I'm just glad with my situation. Now. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, oh, look, I'm glad Jesus was in the room with my half. I'm glad it showed up. I'm glad it showed up. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's and I and I kind of want to deal deal with that too. Um, I guess whenever we come back, I know you. Um, how far away from the? And we are back uh, here on one hundred six point nine Awesome Radio uh, here uh, with a distinguished panel of guests, um, and we're talking about the state of the black community, uh, the violence, uh, and and the culture of of you know disrespecting, uh, just just overall disregard for each other's life, and we were talking about. Uh, the uh, the students and, and and teachers in school and just the disrespect. You can continue on, uh, Elder Best. Yeah, what, what one of, one of the points that I wanted to make is is um, really just adding definition to what culture is, or what the black culture is. Um, I, I've I've adopted the thought process, and some people may not agree with me, um, but what they have ascribed to us as a community, as our culture, I really don't accept it because it seems to be a culture of death, drugs, sex, violence. Mm. And I believe that there's more to us as a community yeah. than that. Right. I think they take the worst part of who we are mm. and make that actually our culture. So what I decided as a husband and as a father, I'm going to create a culture for my own family. Come on, because man. if you look outside of our communities, that's what other people groups do. They actually establish cultures for themselves. 
And so once you establish that culture for yourself, you don't allow anything outside of your culture to infiltrate your culture to change how your children behave themselves. Um, the bottom line is, is that once as a society, as a nation, and even as a local community, once we accept um, criminality as our culture, then the only, the only harvest that we can reap from the seed of criminality is a group of criminals. And so we, we really have to do a root cause analysis to find out how do we get to where we are? How do we get to where we are right now? And simply put, and like I said, the only solution that I really have is the gospel. Um, I, I, think, I think we found ourselves in the place that we are right now because there has been a generation that rejected the gospel. Now we're seeing um, the seeds of that generation begin to grow right before our eyes. Because it was, it, it, it's, it's, it's really just the case to where now us embracing a culture of criminality, we begin to give birth to the young people that think like criminals. And I hate to put it that way. I really do. But the behavior is a lack of respect, not only for other people, but for themselves. So much to the point that they have a total disregard for other people's lives. Now, that's not to mm. try to bash um, young people yeah. because many of them are a product of their environment. Mm -hmm. But I like to say that you don't have to be a product of your environment. You actually can be productive in spite of your environment. And so I, I've, I've had the opportunity down through the years to speak at um, different different functions. And the only criteria I had, if they asked me, how much do you charge? I don't charge anything. My only stipulation is, is that whenever I come, I don't want the parents to drop their kids off. I want them to sit there with them. Mm -hmm. Because it really right. and truly what it should be Anytime your child leaves home, whether or, not, whether or not they go to school, whether or not they're in the classroom at church, wherever they are, it should only reinforce what you've already established at your home. Like, so but what has happened is, is that it's almost as if it's becoming coming upon teachers and people outside of their home to raise your children for you. And so if the children who spend the majority of their time at home with their parents don't respect or listen to them, what happens when they go in there in the classroom with somebody that they don't really know for a couple of hours out of the day? And 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 you are you you spoke on something that that I that I feel strongly about is the culture, right? The culture, and you know, and 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 just like you, you know, I'm a firm believer in Second Chronicles seven. 14 if my people who are called by my name mm -hmm. will humble themselves seek my face and pray and then the the the, the best prerequisite I, I can i can uh put forth is the next verse turn from their wicked ways That's now uh we, we we live in a wicked country you know mm -hmm. uh, in, in a country that has a lot of wicked ways but let let's be let's be honest how much you know, do do we and not we as individuals on this call, but we, you know, as members of the society or ever as adults of children, contribute, you know, mm. to to the wicked ways. Whether it's the music, like I I hear a lot of people, grown people, you know, <laughs> co-signing the music, you know, the the, the young mm. drill music. A lot of grown people walking around singing and and you know not acknowledging. The, the the superstars or, or the, the superstars rappers where, where you know or talking about those uh just just in conversation but as a as a whole community how much are we you know whether even it's beyonce or jay-z you know even that 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 culture that iconic culture that we have lifted people up to the status of gods and we have our children trying to emulate them or you know hearing trying to live out their life how much are we as as, as you know a entire community uh responsible for that culture that you speak of mr Besson, or whoever has an answer i have an answer richard thank you for myself as an example um i haven't always set the best example i have outside of music is the music and the music is not going to go away they're going to have the rap they're going to have beyonce they're going to have jay-z they're going to have that there's nothing that we can have control over but I had a young son. I didn't say it in this example. You got it going in and out. Yeah, you're breaking up, Tish. You're breaking up. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you a little bit better. What about now? 
I'm still breaking it's up. going in and can out. Can you hear me? We can hear you better now. Let me see if I can. You, can you hear me better now? Let me try to move closer yeah, to my can. router. Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah, we can. Okay. So what I was saying is that, you know, outside of the music and the impact that the music has, I said I'm transparent enough to say that when I should have been creating a better atmosphere and being more person purpose being more purposeful in my life for my son that i didn't always make the best choices and a lot of times as parents and as people it's so easy to say well it's the music that they listen to it's this is that those are the things that are never going to go away and those are the things that we're never going to have control on but what we have to realize is a lot of this stuff stems from game banging in the streets and as a single parent myself and as a woman myself that advocates and stand for women honestly say that a lot of this stuff like he said about over mothering a lot of this stuff happens because if i have a son and i'm in the projects and i'm struggling and i do my best to lead him the best if he gets out of the street and he's able to bring in a couple of dollars and he's able to pay a couple of bills in this generation, that's where the disconnect comes in. So we begin to make them feel like that they are that the things that they're doing, making the money, and that's where the friend, mama, friend, and son, friend, and, and my mama, my, like my sister, because they start being an asset, not really thinking about the penalty that's going to happen when when I'm dead in the street. I'm I'm a woman myself, you know, and and, and, and I thank God that my son. I moved my son out of Goldsboro, and you know he's a, he, he's 26 years old. He does what a 26 year old does. He has his own family, raising his daughter, doing what he needs to do as a man. But he never got caught up in that type of drugs and things like that. But the core of the problem, I don't think, is the music, because the music add music comes after they're already in a position or in an environment where they want to be with the drug dealers and the the Crips and the Bloods and. Oh, my set, this, that all comes along with it. I just think it's more or less that, like Mr. Brown said, that he wanted to set the culture for his family. But there was a point in time, y'all, when we was coming up, that man down the street was just as much responsible for me as my father was. Right. The, 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 the old man next door, uh, the, the grandma next door, when she seen something went right, she called and she told my mom. So I think in our culture, this mind my business that ain't my child i think that's a major part of why we are where we are today with the community because we as a black community we are not standing up for our kids you don't have to be my child for me to tell you what's right and so when we got away from the village raising the child and because you was a single mother there still was a couple of men in the neighborhood that get with you if you weren't right i think that was the beginning of the breakdown that we had in the black community all right any yeah i i wanted i want i wanted, I wanted to speak speak to that um speak to that real quick i i, I think um you you raise you raise a good point um sister Krisha, especially about um the, the the whole idea of you know the village the community and the the not telling and I'm just gonna mind my business and and, and, and all of that. I, I think that's something that we have to I think that's something that we have to dispel. Um you know I, I'm just listen I'm a law abiding citizen. I get up and I go to work every day. If you come in my neighborhood and I feel like you're doing some crime, I'm telling Look, you can see my face on it. I'm, 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 I'm the old man that is telling. Tell I'm telling on you because 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 the reality of it is is that there's a there's a lot of things that have taken place and a lot of harm being done simply because somebody said it's not my business. Well, That's right. I, I mean, so, so but I also wanted to speak to the the the, the aspect of, of the music because. When it comes to that, um, m much of what we see take place is more spiritual, I think, than what we're really to, willing to give credit for. So there is a spiritual component that comes along with the music. There is a spiritual component that comes along with the music um, to the point, if you go all the way back back to biblical times, um, that is that is that was before Satan was kicked out of heaven. When he was Lucifer, that was his gift. Whenever he was kicked out of heaven, that he still was able to communicate. Like 
music is the only thing that we have in, in, in life that is able to penetrate the heart and the conscience of a man without his permission. All of us that are up here right now, we learned our ABCs, but we didn't learn the letter, we learned the song. So it's like music is the way that 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 messages are carried out. And it is the most effective way for messages to be carried out. That's how we people for the most part learn. So the 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 the, the people that are that are perpetrating this music literally tell you in the music they have given themselves over to Satan. And the music is no longer just a song, it is a spell that is being cast over the young people and over the community. And so whenever you begin to recite those lyrics, you begin to speak things on yourself to the point that a child that was acting one way one year is a totally different person the next year because there's now um, pretty much, they've been opened up to demonic right. infiltration. I and, so, and, 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 and so and so this is, this is, this is what's happening. Um, and so I, I, I've said this before, <clears throat> um, television and, and radio are the only two avenues that allow people to come into your home that you would never invite into your home. Mm. Because <laughs> if, somebody, if somebody walked up to you and just talked the King Von lyrics to you, they just talked it without a beat, you would be appalled at, at the way that they spoke to you. If somebody just came and just talked, Cardi B's lyrics with no music behind it. You would be just devastated at the fact that a child is speaking like this to you. But if they can put it to a beat, they can hide a message inside of it. Music is like this. Whenever we go to church, I believe all of us that are on here are believers. We, 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 we um, accepted the misconception that when we go to God's house and we begin to lift our hands and worship to music that's being dedicated to God, that something happens inside of us to uplift us. Well, what happens whenever we begin to recite and to lift our hands to music that was dedicated to the devil? So if we believe that God helps to uplift us through song of worship, if there's a song that's dedicated to the worship of Satan, he's going to show up too. And the Bible tells us that he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's right. So, 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 I, so, I, so I think that a, a great deal of it is, of course, because the music sets the atmosphere. Whenever you go to the club, the music sets the atmosphere. That's the reason why that 808 hard driving beat. Um, there was a doctor that did a study years ago. His name was Dr. Mesmer. And that's where we get the word mesmerized from. Mm. And he actually did a study and said that the beat of the bass drum could pound loud enough if it's turned up enough to change the heart of the, the, the heart rhythm of a human being and cause you to feel high. That's the reason why whenever we used to go to the club, when you walked into the club and that song began to thump, you ain't drunk nothing, you ain't smoked nothing, but you just want to get into the atmosphere and be excited about what's going on. Because music is such a powerful weapon that the enemy uses that. Adolf Hitler said, if you give me the music of a children, I was just about to bring that those up. children. Mm -hmm. You give me, so, so, say, so, if you so, give so. me the music of a nation, I'll be able to control their youth. And I'll that's what, that's what we're children. seeing. Mm -hmm. So, so that's what that's that's what we're seeing. And so, I, I mean, to and, and to get back to that, having having my own children, there were just certain things that I would not allow. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and be naive enough to suggest that my children didn't go and listen to it whenever they weren't here. That's However, right. <laughs> I did my due diligence and they didn't listen to it while they were here. Now, if they snuck off the way and did it, I pray that the dealings of the Lord be upon them. But <laughs> while they were here, <laughs> me and hey, Rashida Best, we didn't play it. We were, listen, we were going in their room. We were going, we were flipping over mattress. Man, it, it, it was like, man, we were, we was the uh, COs. We flipping mattress. Uh, we going through the drawer. <laughs> Give me your phone. We going through to see what you listening to. Because, because more than anything, um, as a man, Whenever I stand before God, he's not necessarily going to ask me too much about what I did in church. He's going to ask me, what did you do with what I gave you? Come and on now. Your wife and your children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's my that's my greatest concern and my responsibility is to be the watchman at my house. And if God will allow me, and I believe he has assigned me to be the watchman over anybody that will allow me to, you know, try to help in whatever way I can. Mr. Morgan. You, yes, sir. Mr. Morgan and Mr. Lane, y'all y'all been quiet for a while. I'm sorry, y'all didn't want to go that. No, I, was, no, I, was, no. I was trying to give Mr. Best, brother Best, uh, time. Mr. Boy, you want to go first? Yeah, I shoot. I'm fine. Um, I wanted to hit on 
the on the teacher thing. If that would if that would be me, I hit a teacher. I would have cried to the teacher, not let my daddy see that thing, okay. <laughs> because my okay. daddy would have beat the brakes off of me. I promise you, he would have never said nothing to the teacher. It would be me because I know better. <laughs> That's what he would have done, first of all. But I think part of the stuff we deal with, I think as a people, we are overly emotional. I think we do not deal with our, I don't think we deal with our souls well at all. And if you're talking about the music, the music is the soundtrack to our dysfunction. I think the music that we hear, we 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 fall in love with what it says, but it displays something that's negative for black people. So it's a it's you get you don't understand why a white woman that has never met a black person and she's scared, it's because of what she's seen on TV and what she's seen on a rap video. So that stuff is something when people don't know you, like if you never met somebody that if you see a biker and he's got tattoos on and he's got a trench coat on. We're going to be scared when he walk in there because we think he's going to do so. Because the images that we allow people to to portray us as, it really speaks volume. And I, that's one thing I hate about with black women. When you see them on TV, you see them argumentative. The, oh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you do. And that's what you see. Turn on anything on TV and see what you see. <laughs> If you see, okay. when you see when you see black men, you see them being over aggressive and stuff. So it causes a fear factor that I believe that we buy into, and I don't want us buying into that. But something I want to speak to that I think we overlook from my from the time I was a child or now, there's been a lack of separation between adults and children. That's right. Mm. We, when my, my mom and dad had company, we were in our room or outside playing. That's right. You you come to people's house now, the kids sitting in there having a conversation, ain't no more tea than you do. Come on now. <laughs> you know? And and so they feel like they're on our level. They are the last they, look, my dad was military, so I come up a little bit different. But they were the level, they were people that was, you know, with us, we didn't want to be called yes sir, no sir, because we, we felt like we weren't old enough. But everybody that I was around, I had to say yes sir, no sir too. And they were, some of them, you know, ain't but, but 20, 21 years old, but I didn't know no better because my dad made me have respect for people. So I think that's some stuff. Sometimes we, I think we have a tendency to overcorrect. So we'll sway one hard one way and then we'll sway all the way to the other side and we lack balance. As a yeah. people, but I yes, think that's yes. something yeah. that we can we can work on. And my last point is, we can't help nothing that we deem as hopeless. So we see this generation as hopeless. We can't never be able that's to help. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we we're gonna get get to you uh, real quick, uh, John. But uh, first of all, we just have to end the radio portion. I thank our radio listening audience for tuning in. Uh, make sure you guys tune in next week for another episode of the U Turn Show. Here on Awesome Radio, www.wbisawesomeradio.org. Uh, and also, we are newly uh, in place in Rocky Mount. So if you're in the Rocky Mount area, check us out on 100.3 WYLT. Uh, this has been an episode uh, of the U-Turn Show. I definitely want to thank all of our guests and all of our listening audience. Make sure you tune in again, tune in again next week at 8 p.m. sharp. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see, see you next week. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Right, okay, go ahead, Mr. Lay. Okay, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I want to touch on some things, man. You know what I'm saying? Because when we talking about this show, what are we talking about right now, that we on right now? Yeah, we on. We're talking about the state of the black community, okay? And I've heard a lot of things that everybody sees, but I want y'all to remember: you got to ask yourself, how did we get to this place? That's right. Okay, we're not living out a narrative that we created for ourselves. Come on now, we're living out a narrative that was created for us. Mm -hmm. For as far back as we can go, and I ain't even gonna take you back to re uh, uh, to Reconstruction America. I'm gonna take you back to the civil rights movement. And during the civil rights movement, when we began to come together, we became the biggest threat on American soil. We are the most disadvantaged, disenfranchised, disenfranchised. We are the most, the only controlled population of people in the world. 
we as a nation of people have been given a limited amount of resources to succeed in life. Yeah. What we're seeing is it is it, 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 just the culmination of all the the, the the malevolent intentions of the government uh that was set in place when i say that this is what i mean there is ghettos for a reason black people make up 12.5 percent of the u.s population but yet we account for something like 35 40 percent of poverty okay we our our children sell drugs that are not even indigenous to this country okay there is a proliferation of guns in our communities but none of us own no gun stores okay these things have been put and placed in our circle for a particular reason we are the only nationality ethnicity of people that were intentionally by the government uh denied access to housing access to land access to things that would create generational wealth and what we're seeing is the same thing that we saw years ago after the civil rights movement, okay? When, 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 when they ushered in all of these new exotic drugs into the community for people who didn't have uh, any other resources, you had no examples to follow of people who had success stories in your community or you're, or, 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 or you're living in the projects, you're living in the ghetto and, 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 and your mama is the only one in the house. And all you're saying, and, 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 and so we know that this is what the drug game stem from. And then from that, uh, uh, guns became a thing because it took a certain mentality to run them streets and to operate out there in them streets. Yeah. But the whole time, black people legally are not gaining any more traction. You can go into any black community today across this nation, and you're not going to find, we make up 0.5% of the businesses in this country. That's an appalling number. Okay, we own 10 times as many businesses before integration as opposed to after integration when things were supposed to be better. When you got people and you got children that walk around inadvertently and subliminally go into stores and you never see anybody that looks like you, it creates an attitude to desperation. Mm -hmm. There is a reason that we're living in this, in this, in this, in this chaotic atmosphere that we're in, and it ain't got nothing to do with us. It does, but it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Listen, I said it does, but it doesn't. It were things that were strategic, strategically put in place, for the most part. But we do have the power to change. It. Yeah. We have the power to change it, but it takes the collective. It takes us coming together and saying and putting this is what I heard. I heard Louis Farrakhan say not long ago that we've been depending on white people to do what black people are capable of doing for ourselves. Yeah. They yeah. have they have reparated every nation, even the ones that we had nothing to do with their destruction but they have failed to reparate the one that they've done the most damage to. Now we spoke about the music. There is, the music does play a large part, but we also have to bear in mind that the most damaging part, the most detrimental part is that they're allowed to perpetuate gun violence. All the music can't bear. When you got artists like Kendrick Lamar with songs like We Gonna Be All Right, Mm -hmm. and, and, and and songs like DNA, you got you, you got artists like J. Cole who speaks about the unity and um, the amalgamation of our nation. Yeah. You know what I mean? But on the flip side of it, you got record executives that encourages the perpetuation of gun violence. You know what I mean? Like brother said a while ago, you listen to some artists like Lil Baby or The Baby or, or, or Kodak Black. And that's all they talk about is murdering one another, bro. It has no real content. It, it don't even have no real substance, right? And so there is so many things, man, that, I mean, there is just a myriad of things that we're facing as a nation. But we have to start at the root of the problem. We can't start at the top of the problem and work our way down. We have to start at the root of the problem and work our way up. And that starts by having discussions like we're doing, 
and not just talking about it, but actually beginning to put the pieces in place. Because we can do it whether we have to march or we have to build stores. We spend in the trillions. Our consumer spending budget is so astronomical. We can do anything we want, but we have to, it has to start somewhere. We have to have a starting point. This is a great starting point, but it's about action. Action is a bigger, it, 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 it's much bigger than words. But it's good to have the words. I want I want to piggyback real quick because what 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 you're saying is very true, uh, and I, and I noticed that you know when I was in uh, Gaithersburg, Maryland, uh, this mm-hmm. past weekend. Uh, Gaithersburg is one of the the top three richest counties on the East Coast, right? Mm-hmm. And walking around Gaithersburg and seeing people, I just everybody's so nice. Everybody's you know opening doors for you. They're talking to you, speaking to you. Why? Because there's no poverty, you know, there's no lack there. Right. So what you're saying is very true because you know Goldsboro is a is a is is a is a, is a haven for poverty. A lot of these southeastern North Carolina towns, the South in particular, and so that is a prerequisite for violence, for drug use, for despair when there are no opportunities. So I definitely feel you on that, as well as something you said that is really you know, and 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 I know. You know, we we have to take a responsibility for what we know and what we do and what what our actions are. But so, like you said, subliminally, subconsciously, even you know, growing up in school, we never learn anything about the greatness of black. There you go. You know, we're we're always taught the greatest writer was Mark Twain. We're always taught the the greatest scientist was Louis Pasteur. We always taught George Washington was the greatest man alive and never told a lie. Everything that was good and perfect was white. And that's all through grades one through 12, even through college, unless you're taking some African studies class. So subliminally, you know, they're not telling you, okay, you're nothing. But subliminally, if you're never getting any positive images of yourself, any positive knowledge, only thing you know that you was a slave, Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. You know that 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 and, and and that is one reason why a lot of young young black men do drop out of school because whatever they're reading, whatever they're listening to has nothing to do with the edifying of them. Now, um, and, and 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 to take it even further, you know, and and because we are all believers, but one thing that 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 I think matters a lot. You know, and a lot of people say it doesn't matter, but so once again, subliminally, image, image, we are a uh, imagery people is we're never taught about the historic uh, lineage or the story, the historic heritage of the people we learn about in the Bible. You know, it, it is proven that you know the people in the Bible look like us, but nobody teaches that. You know, nobody harps on that. If, right. if I think if young men and young women realize, OK, no, this book is about a people that look like me or people that are, that our lineage is from, we would have a higher self value, you know, than, you know, than, 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 than a lot of times that, that we have. But, you know, that that, that speaks to once again, the, the subliminal things, the, the, the mind, because we are. Uh, a, a, a mindful people. There are certain. There are certain. Like I said, there are certain propaganda. There are certain agenda. They actually. I mean, they. These people study who we are, and implement things to say. Okay, well, you know, we know that they're going to do this. We know they're going to do this, and that 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 speaks to once again, like what we buy with our resources like you said we we, we have all these resources but we own no business but what do we buy we right. buy three times as much mercedes benz as, as as other people but we have less than three times the wealth we spend uh, you know trillions and, and billions on beauty products who told us we can buy our beauty you know uh we we, we spend you know so much on on things to enhance our value because we've been told for so long that we as a people are not valuable and our children have adopted this mindset and we'll say you know some of these I want to say Richard have have have, have adopted uh, these <laughs> mindsets. so I definitely wanted to piggyback on that because a lot of people don't like to mention that you know like like I I'm a believer I listen to Farrakhan I listen to a lot of a lot of uh 
you know, as they call them, pro-black leaders. And a lot of the points, once again, you might you might not agree with all of them, but a lot of the points that, that, that they say are relevant right. you know, to mm-hmm. the way we are as a people. And mm-hmm. they say half the battle sometimes is knowing. So once we know mm-hmm. these things, okay, how can we take, how can we put mm-hmm. our resources? Like you said, we, we talk about, oh, well, the government wants to, you know, they, they wants to put, uh, homosexuality in schools and we don't like it. Okay, let's take all of our money that we spend on Air Jordans or, you know, we spend at McDonald's or we spend on, you know, at, 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 at Michael Kors and Gucci. Let's take all that money and build our own schools. Mm-hmm. And, so, mm-hmm. and so that's the kind of mindset that I see us in where we are complicit in, a lot of times in our own destruction. I, and I and I see you, I see you, Mike, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get me one in. <laughs> go, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sir. <laughs> this is, this is, this is what I want. I want to add that uh, before we get off, and I want to say, you know, what I'm trying to do because I do have um, something that, that I'm working on. This is the thing I feel. First thing is, like you said, Mike, you know, we've getting away from the foundation of church. But, and I'm not trying to open this can of worms because everybody knows from here to D.C. how I feel about this situation. <laughs> but first thing we have to do as a church people, we got to get out the church doors. Ooh. We got to get out in these streets, man. And we got to let them know it's okay to be different. You know, they, like, they ain't coming to us. So our job as disciples is to go out and compel the people to come. You know, so we have to get back to that. That's number one. If we if if we're gonna say well the value and and you know you know we lose the church value the value of the church and what the church means you got to get out there in them streets and you got to let them know the value and you got to let them know that it's okay to be different. You got to let them know it's okay to be saved and love God and love the Lord because they're not coming into the church. That's the first thing that we have to do because they're not gonna come into church. Not not what we're dealing with in this season because the generation is so far gone. If we sit and wait for them to come to church, then everybody be shot up. Did because it ain't gonna happen. So as a family, as a church family, as a black community, we got to go out there in them streets, leave those four walls, and we got to start trying to make a difference. Number one, number two, what we have to do is that we have to realize that these guys and these young kids at this day and age, they need to hear the Johns, they need to hear the Richards, they need to hear the Mikes, they need to hear the Mister Morgans, they need to hear that it's okay to be different. Because what's happening is because you've had men that's in the street that have a certain reputation, well, they may not know you personally, but their daddy may know you, John, or their granddaddy may know you or something like that. We need to get something together. Now, because I'm the only woman on the panel, I'm going to just be transparent. If I look down my timeline and, I'm, and I'm, I don't have anything to do and I want to go to events, I have events, uh, there's probably about 15 or 20 women I can just name on my timeline that has events to uplift and motivate women. Where are the events for the men at? Who's stepping up outside of the church? Who's going to the projects, knocking on the door, saying, do you got a son, ma'am? How old is he? I'm having this event. I want to come. He don't have no ride. We're going to try to range a range, range, rise to pick him up. The women are getting out there in these streets and we're doing the conferences and we're trying to uplift our black women and we're trying to motivate them and let them know that today is not the end. Tomorrow is a new day. But y'all have to stand up and be counted. When you stand before God, like my pastor saying, and he check your spiritual resume, what is it going to say? So it starts with, yes, John, we need the stores. But ain't nobody putting no money together to buy no stores. Kids are getting killed in the street. Uh-huh. And we're talking about God and loving God and God's people have been a blessing. But we got to get out here. Y'all got to get out here as men and start having some conferences. Y'all got to start having some basketball tournaments. Y'all got to have some counseling having some counseling sessions. Y'all have to start doing the things that we are doing to make a difference in the kids. I mean, women, now don't get me wrong, we can only do so much when it comes to the male aspect. Okay, I had John in, Richard had been in one of my conferences, and the women came and they did with me and talk, and they fed us as women. But that really don't happen too often. That was just something that God gave me. Now, if I could get y'all to come together and get out here in these streets and get these boys, and, and even if you can't get the, the ones that's that's old enough to make a decision, but John, you can do it because you got something you want to say. Did you can say, Richard, you can do it. You can get that 21 year old uh, 21 year old on that corner packing that gun to listen to what you gotta say, John, because you've been there and done that. 
So what we as a people, as a community, what we need is we need you black men, we need you guys to stand up and be counted. God said, let your work speak for you. Let your work speak for you. It's good to talk and say, woo, woo, but let your work speak for you. Because when your resume is full and you stand before him, you can't say, well, God, I did good with my people. Or I did good with my family. No, what you do to the least of them, you do unto God. So if we're going to get back to the foundation of what it's going to take as a community to stop doing this, we need y'all like never before to stand up and be counted. So what I am doing, we just turned in our permit and I need y'all to be praying. My team, woman to woman, we are orchestrating a community unity, stop the violence event at Minnewell Park. We turned in our permit today. Now, everybody know how it goes, Berlin. <laughs> we going to pray and believe God that everything going to go according to how it's supposed to go. I didn't want to just have it without having a permit because I didn't want them to come shut us down. I talked to Richard on yesterday. I talked to John. We got AJ. We got Tony Lewis. We got some men that's been out there in them streets. Only thing that me and my team is going to do is because that we're women, I got Craig Mercer, which is the ambassador of my church from New Jersey. He's got some ideas. He's going to try to bring some of his friends down from Jersey. What we're going to do is that we're just going to get the place, get the grills, which we said he's going to help with that, get the food, get the people going to come. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to reach out to every woman, man that has ever had a child. It don't matter if it were 20 years ago, they got killed in the street. I need a picture because we need to be visual. I'm going to take those pictures and I'm going to blow them up and I'm going to get me some sticks and I'm going to put them in the ground all over the park because we're going to be visual. What I need y'all to do is, I told Richard, I said, Richard, we're going to set everything up. I need you, whoever going to speak, what type of time they got. John going to bring his shirts, his lock, lockdown movement. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have some shirts and things out there and I'm going to follow back me and my team and I'm going to let y'all do what y'all need to do to try to save the community. The only thing we're going to do is just like help me midwives we're gonna set it up but when it's set up i'm trusting and leaning and depending on you john and richard and mike if you're available and mr morgan if you're available and anybody else in the community it's not a woman to woman thing it's a cry for our black men to stand up and because i'm adamant about that that i'm willing me and my team which we're already in the process of doing soon we're looking at june the 10th but i'm not putting anything out for sure until i get the permit which was submitted today so that's, that's my aspect. That's where I stand on the whole situation is that we need y'all. We need y'all to be out here in these streets. If you're a man of God and you believe in the things of God and you know that you ain't scared to be out in these streets, pull them brothers to the side. I guarantee you if you begin to minister them and pray and get them in a place where they're vulnerable, God will come in and he'll give you the opportunity to speak and pray for them. But we women, we need y'all to step up, come up, and let's go for real quick i know mike want to say something let me respond to what you said real quick though just add something real quick uh that's my action my position to minister about through uh, economic empowerment mm -hmm. and, and and to get the community aware of what we're doing we're having three phases we're having a community call out and then a neighborhood call out. the neighborhood call out is to call all the young men mm -hmm. uh, uh to a to a particular place that's right uh, to determine the prospects it's it's really a multi-faceted thing if you want to read uh, entirely what it is and our approach to changing the black community, then you can go to my website, GlockdownMovement.com. Read all about it. Read all about it, because this is what I guarantee. If my program is implemented in Goldsboro as God gave it to me, this is what I want you to understand. This is not something that I created on my own. This is something that God gave me in a vision. Amen. And, I, and, 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 and I'm carrying my purpose out. He showed me that everything that I had been through, I had lived through to get me to this point. Okay. So, so if you get a chance, go to my website, uh, uh, see what we're doing. Um, because I promise you this, if it is implemented the way that God gave it to me, I can change Goldsboro in any city in the state of North Carolina in ways that's unprecedented. I promise you, I give you my word. I am with anything because I am desperate. I am not just somebody to sit around and talk. I am proactive. And the great thing about it is, you mentioned something while ago, I have a book full of young dudes that are active gangbangers 
that listen to what I say and, uh, and say, Uncle Duck, I want to change. Uncle Duck, yes, help right. me. They are waiting on my phone call right now yeah. to say that this program has been put in place and it's coming. So I'm, I'm telling you, I've been doing my part. I do my part. Anywhere I can help a young man that is willing to listen, I got words of encouragement. The Bible said, don't throw your pearls before swine. That's so right. if you don't want to listen to what I That's say, right. then I'm going to shake the right. dust off my feet. Right. And I'm gonna keep it right. Right. But for right. everyone that don't want to hear what you're saying, they five that's thirsty for Come on, come on, come because on. They're looking for that male role model to fulfill that place that their father didn't. I got young men that had came to me and told me things that they wouldn't even tell their best friend for fear they're going to be made to look less than what they are. That's right. And they entrust me with it. You know why? Because they can trust me with it. That's right. That's right. They can trust me with it. I can identify with who they are. I've been that gun toter. I've been that dude that right. was I've been that guy. And That's I know right. why I was who I was at that time. That's and right. God has gave me the ability That's to right. be able to identify with these young men. That's so right. They listen to me. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you this right here. As long as I got to add my body, I'm going to pursue what God has given That's me. That's right. That's right. It's going to flourish. It's going to succeed. Y'all, you know, the redemption. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. I promise you. Right. I promise you. I ain't on this panel for no reason. That's, That's what right. If you get a chance, y'all go check my website out. Yeah, I, just post, I just posted it in the, the comments. So, yeah. Absolutely. I actually just checked it out. And I wasn't meaning like individually just y'all guys. I was just saying as the black men period. So I'm not like pointing out what you need. You know, I'm just yes. saying as the black, strong black men, we need to come together the state, and I'm not going to say the same way the women do because y'all do things different. You know, it takes a man for a man. But I just that. Think that right. We need to, the, the, the black men really, the strong ones that been through something, I think y'all hold the key to the change. It's coming. All right. And, and go ahead. No, I thought Brother Biss wanted to say something. <laughs> I oh, thought no, my no, I, I, look, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm taking it. I'm taking. I'm taking it all in. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in 100% agreement with um, what both of you all have 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 just put forth. Um, my, 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 my approach, my approach to it all um, is definitely to um to to actionize what you all you know what you what you said, Sister um, Cresha. Whenever you do it, let me know. Okay. Let okay. Me, uh, I'm looking whenever, at June the I'm looking at June the 10th, yeah. but, I, but only thing is the hold up now with the permit. We just put it in today, so we're gonna keep our fingers crossed that they give us a permit to use the park. If not, I'm gonna still have it if I have to go another avenue. But I really want that you do. Y'all remember Black? Remember Black Family Day? You know what I'm saying? That we yeah, have the park. I want it to be something to that nature. We can all get together. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a unity thing. You know, I know sometimes women, you know, we're kind of a little bit better at, you know, getting the ball rolling. That's why I told Richard, you know, I just want to have an avenue where I want the man to stand up and be counted. Right. So, so I, um, like the, the, I guess from my, from, from my standpoint, um, and what 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 both of you what what both of you said I think is I mean I think it's outstanding. Um, my 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 entire approach and and like I said I've been doing it for years. Like my my training in ministry started in the street um, mm -hmm. before we were able to be licensed as a minister. We were one year we, one year in the street. You had That's to right. you had to be in the street because um, my leader at the time was he always said, look, if you can preach and minister to people in the street, you can minister anywhere. Um, right. I think I did um, like prison outreach ministry for about about 13 years. So um, my heart is just for souls. But what I found out in in, in, in my time um, of just being a believer and just being um, doing mentoring and things of that nature, the thing that I found that worked, I think I think programs are great. But if the, the, but the programs have to be centered around the gospel. Absolutely. Um, because. That is the only thing that can change, that can really change the heart of a man or a woman, is, is the actual gospel. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and our thought process in that also has to be for the present world, but it also has to be for eternity as well. Um, because yes, we want, we want the young men to change and to, 
you know, put down their guns and do the things that's going to make them productive citizens in, in society. Um, but then whenever they leave here, we hope that they become productive and their life is not snuffed out through gun violence. But then whenever they leave, we want them to leave. Um, we want them to leave right, if you will, um, born again and knowing who Jesus is. So I think that um, everything that we are going to do, and I'm saying it by faith, everything that we're going to do, um, the part that I want to that, that that I want to play in it, and I'm with I'm with you 100 percent with everything that you all are talking about doing. Um, but I just would encourage all of us, and I'm not saying that you all aren't. Um, but everything in order for us to have a lasting change on people's lives, it has to be centered around the gospel because that's what is. And I like what you said. You can't cast your pearls to the swine because oftentimes what happens and I, and I say, I'll make this quick. When things happen, that's what people say. Where's the church? Where's the church? How come the church is not being involved? And I will submit that there are churches that are being involved. But whenever the church shows up, you have to accept what the church has to offer. And the greatest element of what the church has to offer is the gospel. We can feed you, but if you don't accept the gospel, you still end up dying and going to hell with a full belly. So our focus is, is really to do whatever we can, I guess, to get uh, the hook in their mouth, if you will. I love the idea you talking about getting the grill and just anything that will bring them to where we are. But the focus, the focus of it, 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 it has to be that um, we want to see their lives change. Yeah. And yeah, the focus is not only the, 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 the focus is always Christ. I don't, everything that I do is always centered around God. Me too. But I have yeah. enough God in me to realize that one plant, one water, but only God can get an increase. So right. what we have to do is that once every conference, everything, and Richard will tell you, John will tell you, everything that I've ever done is always, God is always the center. Right. You know, but we have to always, he take the simple things to confine the wise. Okay. So we can't cast our pearls among swine, but one time we were swine. Mm -hmm. right. So if, if somebody took a chance to cast a pearl to me, to, to make me surrender all to God. So just because that you're going to run into some people and you're not going to be able to get everybody, mm -hmm. but we got to go back for the wound. Right. You see where I'm coming from? So, but as we begin to yep. minister to them, we have to minister to their need. You know what I'm saying? God gonna get an increase because He's gonna open the door to allow you the opportunity to minister and, and, and get them to that point. But but you can't great mm -hmm. catch the fish, scale it, and all in one. It, 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 they they levels to this thing. So first thing we have to do is get their teaching. The Bible say, "Be mm -hmm. renewed by the transforming of your mind." Get their teaching and be able to change their mind. Now, there's going to be one or two that you're going to run into that's just ready to go all in, and they just ain't had nobody to minister to them that'll accept Christ Johnny on the spot. But then there's going to also I, say, those division, show the those of vision, Terry, you still got the weight on it. And just because mm -hmm. a lot of times with church, and I say the church, when the church show up, the church don't show up. I know the mm -hmm. church ain't been showing up because I've been out there in them streets. And it's not about <laughs> giving them things, it's about giving them hope. And when mm -hmm. the and Richard, you know yourself like we talked about last time, your daddy, Arnold Thornton, and Miss Sally Jean, and, and, and how that was out there on the block, and how people was knocking on the door, giving you those things with the church man gonna be up here, baby, on the corner at 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. He go, uh, 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 this what time you don't worry about how you dress, just come on out. Uh, is it all right if I pray for you? They ain't doing yeah. that no more. They ain't got no street ministries no more. They ain't knocking on no doors no more. They ain't inviting nobody to church no more. They ain't knocking on people's doors and asking about their children say, ain't got no vans to pick nobody. All that's non void now. Now, there may be one or two churches say, well, my church doing it, but if one church can do it, then we wouldn't need a nation. Okay? So as far as, and everybody know how I feel like they're on the church thing, you have to get out there in them streets. My church is fully active. Apostle Lisa and Craig Mercer, they fully active 100 street street ministry all the way to the end. And we don't have mm -hmm. a lot of people in our church. We don't have a huge church ministry, but we have a huge community ministry that we do a lot of things in the community. Ambassador Craig is just do um he just had a conference and met with a lot of black men that had businesses in Wilson. And what he is doing now mm -hmm. is that it's, they're trying to get a safe house together. They got grants and stuff they put together, trying to get money to buy houses and do things to be a blessing. Not because they inside of the church waiting on the church people to come because we don't have a whole lot of members in our church. They on the outside making it shake. 
for the people that don't come to church. And then once we get them and get their attention, and then they let them know, well, who did this? Oh, well, where are we all from? You know what I'm saying? But you have to get out there and plant the seed. One plant, one water, but only God can give the increase, and they plant the seed, and we minister. It amazed me when Ambassador Craig had that thing in Wilson, and I walked in the door, and there was about 35 men in there. They had their own businesses. That's doing their own thing. He had guys that come from New Jersey that was putting the plan together to build safe houses and getting grants and stuff together, working on it now for men that come out of prison. You see what I'm saying? So what we got to do is we got to try to use all our resources. God is always going to be in the foundation of everything that you do if you're a child of God. But you still have to get out there to make it happen. Let them people know. They was talking about that. I'm finna end my thing, Rich. I'm finna be quiet. But they was talking about the prayer. That <laughs> but they was talking Talk about the stuff, prayer that they did and my mama was there and she said you know what she said it's a shame she said you would think that because there was a call for ministers and pastors and and, and people like that you know that they were kind of she said that didn't she that was out there smoke she said baby the reef was so strong she said i prayed to put my the face mask so to keep from getting the contact the respect for the church is gone i know master ain't gonna block with miss sally jean i'll be out there smoking weed and everything when i see miss sally jean and Anna thought and them coming to your daddy and them coming up that street oh everybody putting out blunts and everybody's trying hey how you doing you know because even though we were doing wrong because they were present and we knew it was 10 o'clock at night and they could have been anywhere they on james street walking and praying you think them prayers were denying prayer you think we was denying prayer we were hiding our reef and putting our packs up everybody tucking their pistols pulling up their pants just as it because it was a respect that we had for them you see what i'm saying and that's what is lacking the respect for the church the street don't have respect for the church them guys was out there smoking reef and music blast they out there trying to play they didn't they they, 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 they over there because why because we're no longer present in the street yeah that's 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 an aspect you know and it, and, it, and, and as somebody said in the con comments you know it's that's so that's not something everybody can do either you know i think i think um you know i think i think you know sometimes we want you know people to get out there everybody don't got that in them you know so so i guess we got to give you got to give grace because some people ain't been out there some people don't, don't know how to reach those guys you know i think you bear in mind to mention too rich uh when you're saying that because i get what Keisha is saying i really i honestly do miss uh Foster, sister Foster. But I, I want you to keep in mind that this is a different climate today. You know what I mean? It's a different climate because we are on we are on a panel talking about gun violence and the lack of respect that people have right. uh, for people today. You know what I mean? Right. There was there there is there is there is a a a a, 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 a there is a lack of um uh, of cultural morale. Uh, for lack of a better term, there, there, there was just a lack of of of, 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 of of respect for for your fellow man. I mean, any in any time, you know, we live in a, we live in a we live in a country now that last year they had more mass shootings than they did days of the year. But we become so impervious to gun violence that it takes somebody going into a kindergarten in order to put it on the news. You see what I'm saying? Two or three people, four or five people to get killed now don't even make the news no more because we become so immune to it. You understand? So I think it always bears in mind that you always got to, you know what I mean? It, 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 it can still happen, but you just got to be careful. Yeah, you got to be yeah. careful, but you got to be careful now because it stopped. See, if it was something that when they passed the torch to us, John, when Honor Thornton and Miss Sally Jean and Richard Daddy and all those people that would do that street ministry, when they got old, when they couldn't go out there and when they patched the torch, if we would have picked it up, it wouldn't be nothing new. It would have been what they, when they first started hanging on them streets, they would have said, well, the church folk going to be coming through here. But see, now it's sticky because it's something new. Because we dropped the ball as a church community. But if we would have kept them church vans rolling, and we would have kept knocking on them doors, and we would have got that torch with Honor Thornton and, and, and my, uh, Sally B. Sally Jean and all them would have got it and kept the ball rolling, and we wouldn't have had this break in between. It would have been smooth like it's been been because it was something we all preachers are having. 
You see what I'm saying? The problem now is because things have gotten so bad and we have not been doing that and we have not been accessible to those guys in the street. Now the problem is how do we reiterate ourselves as the body of Christ that we can go out and compel the people to come and be safe at the same time? We dropped the ball. That's what the that's it, why it could be about. reinstated. It could be reinstated, but but it's gonna it's, it's gonna take time and, and, and um, um, methodical planning. And and one thing I, I want to uh, you know go go back to because you know the, the conversation started with you know once again the gun violence mm -hmm. and the young lady you know who was killed and you know and uh, apparently uh, once again you know. From my understanding, a flower was put out, and you know, uh, the 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 people, who, the, the children who put out the event, you know, said that the ops were welcome too, you know, on the uh, on the flyer, which ops meaning enemies, and you know, once again, it, it just it, it saddens me on, on in a town so small. How can you have you know ops when everybody went to the um, same school? So evidently, it's an element out there that 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 is it it is it's probably it, it may be you know too late and i think i was talking to mr Ben mm. the other day and he he was he was giving some solutions that are unconventional you know that that that, that are really unconventional and um could, could, could you give the people a little a little insight about what well, like like the, the reformed or removed uh aspect that that, that, that you were talking about <laughs> I mean, that's it. We got, we got to keep, we got to keep. It. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, that was, it was, it was, it was something that I read. It was something I was reading. And the person that had written, had written that article, um, there was, I think it was in Minnesota when the mayor had given the the gang members, the um, the, the the drug dealers, and um, and people that were a part of that that element who who they had given opportunity to change that made made up their mind that they just weren't going to. And they were given, I think they were given the people like $10,000 to relocate. Oh, wow. To, um, to, to, to just to look and to, and, and for a period of time that, that level, that level of crime in that particular area went down um, because that element, um, the, 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 the mm. element began to, um, to, 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 to leave. Um, but I want to, I want to say, um, like I said, I, I just, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm really just, I'm concerned um, because of again because of the climate that we're in. Yeah. Um, like like Brother John was saying, the climate that we're in is is you know, um, Sister Sister Christian, when you were talking about um, Elder, Elder Thornton and and, and uh, Elder Taylor and, and those guys, um, the gospel is still the same, even though we're living in a, 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 a different element. Um, the gospel is still the same, and I, and I believe that it still has the ability. Um, it has the ability to change Absolutely. people. Absolutely, um, yes, it does. And and and, and to change the hearts yes, uh, and the minds of of, uh, of those individuals. But what we, what we have to, what we cannot, um, what we cannot do is again. We, we I said it. I think earlier we got to get to the root to the root cause analysis of it. Um, much of what we're seeing take place. Much of what we're seeing take place for all of us that are Bible readers. The Bible talked about these days will come where these things Absolutely. were going to happen. Yeah. And we are in that time. Like we're seeing that unfold right before our eyes. When, when, when whenever the disciples ask Jesus, you know, how do we know that we're going to be in the end time? How do we know? And when Jesus, I think it's in Matthew 24, when he was talking about, you know, we gave the, the Olivet Discourse and he was telling them what to look for. Everything that he said was going to happen is happening before us right now. Um, so again, we are we are in a warfare that is gotten more intense now than I think than what we've ever seen it before. Um, in the in the because we live in a fallen world for one, but now we're seeing a generation of people again who have gotten so far from God that you know that there 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 are people like 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 Roman said that let's just be real about it they're afraid to go and be a part of the element and go out into the streets and the minister. And that's, and, and, and it's understandable, but they still have a place, you know, they still have a place in the fight that we're, that we're waging. Um, uh, I, I just, I just think that we have to all, we have to be very, very conscious of the fact that we're living in a time that, you know, the Bible says that the things that we see happening are going to happen. 
but it doesn't mean that we can't do our part because there's a part that we all have to play to make sure that we're doing every single thing that we can. I was excited. My daughter sent us a text message this morning. She's 16 years old. She's a sophomore at Eastern Wayne and she's a part of the FCA. And she was excited about the fact that they were able to win. I think it was four young people got saved at school today. Um, our, our pastor, Pastor Ravon Ravenel, who goes and um, volunteers, um, I think it's that friend. Mm -hmm. He was able to lead about four or five young men to Christ at school. Mm -hmm. So there, there are people that are that are that are doing things, um, and it's kind of like on an individual level. But like you all are saying, us coming together can be more impactful. Um, but we also have to make sure that we do our parts as individuals because all of us walk past Absolutely. somebody in our neighborhood. All of us drive past people on our way to church. Right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, all of us, all of us mm -hmm. see the opportunities. You know, the Bible mm -hmm. says that the labor, that the harvest is plenty, but the laborers, but the laborers are few. Yep. They're, 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 they're few laborers. I mean, when we look at the story of the Good Samaritan, how there were people that were on their way to do a good thing. All the while they passed what they needed to be doing. There was a person that was mm -hmm. beat down. So I think that what's that's if, if there's anything to blame the church for is is um people the individuals that make up the church sometimes have gotten so focused on their service within the four walls as you said that they bypass the one that's on the street that's hurting and so because even in that story there was a priest that was on his way to church that walked past the person that was beat up and bleeding and left from there and somebody came along and helped advantage him up but I, I like I said, I'm in agreement with what everybody yeah. is saying. Yeah. I just wanted to also yeah. um to, to 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 really just make sure that we yeah. um yeah. That, that that and not saying yeah. that you're not, but yeah. that 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 the fuel that continues to keep us going because it'll fizzle out if we don't allow the, the, the message of the cross to really just you know fuel everything that we say yeah. and everything that we do. Um, yeah, but, and like I said, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited yeah. about what yeah, but this, uh, the, yeah, but this the dilemma that I'm having. This is the dilemma. That I'm having with this 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 situation. If the violence is in the street, mm -hmm. and the kids that's in the street that's doing the violence, they in the street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if we ain't going out in the street, and I get that everybody, you know, you know, they say people, you know, if you're an elderly person, you know, that's fine. I'm out there in the street because God got my bag. He backing me up and I know who's sending me. I know who my assignment is. And I'm willing to sacrifice what I got to sacrifice to be a blessing to God's people. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? Right. But if the people are getting killed in the street, it's the guys that's mm -hmm. in the street that's toting the guns, doing the drive-bys, killing the kids and doing the things they're doing. And we ain't out in the street. What we going to do? No, you got, you got, you got to. Take, How we gonna get them? You got, you got to take it to you to the street, but you're. How we gonna get them? That's the point, and I understand what you're saying. But excuse me, John. I understand what you're saying, you're saying Mr. Best. I really do. But when you look at the bigger picture, I could be able to have a woman on my job, and I can minister her, and that's me doing my part. But she ain't picking up no gun out on that corner drive, doing no drive by killing no children. So mm -hmm. what we have to figure out if if the church, and it's not about blaming the church, you know, because I, you know, I'm a child of God. I have, you know, my church, my pastor, I, you know, my church family and everything, you know, I just feel on my side with my church family. We, you know, our mission is just different. Okay. No, but I'm saying if if the guys got the streets in the gun, and we say, you know, you got to spread God, you got to let them know, you know, by the presence of God, God is gonna be this inside source. He is really the reason that we're doing all this to get them from that point, even after they put the guns down, make sure their soul is not lost in eternal hell, right? But if mm -hmm. we ain't got enough heart to go out in the street, how are we gonna stop them? Yeah, that's that's that I, I think you know, once again, it's 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 a mission, it's a separate mission for everybody. Once again, everybody can't go. Like the ones who can go gonna go. You know, like I said, I, I'm gonna go. So, I'm gonna go. you know, so some people yeah. can't go. Like some people I get that. Everybody. I get that, but I just want to it's, it's, let him know the bigger picture that, because the street that. is where we having a problem. I understand. Like 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 my brother Dougie Ashford said, he said from working at a school in Wayne County that gets students from every from every from every high school in Wayne County these kids have options from situations that are 40 to 50 years old example mm. south side webtown 800 That's versus right. northeast jungle versus south side 800 i believe that it's going to take what everyone else is saying however it's going to take men and women with knowledge x right. example people with knowledge of how those rivals started prayer warriors people with resources. Right. 
federal. So he makes a great point. Like he he's, he's not out. Right in the he this he's not out in the streets. He's out. He's actually in the school where his lane is, and he's still reaching those guys who are out in the street. So you know, don't don't think just because everybody is not going out there that nobody's going out there. Like like I said, there's going to be some some people going to have to reach those same kids who are in the streets toting guns while they are at school. You know, yeah. so there's one of that 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 just just like the uh you know the Bible said the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers you know, are fruit. But the laborers laborers are fruit. But they you know we can harvest them in the streets. We can harvest them in the church. We can harvest them at the school. We can harvest them wherever we meet them at. So I think I think everybody has the right idea and everybody has a place in that. So um I I, I thank you guys because it's getting late. So we, I I wanted to keep it under an hour and thirty minutes. We're we're, we're right at hour and forty. So uh, we we want to do this again. You know maybe even next week because we didn't you know touch a lot of topics. Um, but I, I I really thank all of the knowledge, all of the insight because um and, and and everyone who was in the comments as well. I've been reading the comments. I I couldn't share them all like I normally do because the conversation. You know we have so many guests. So I can't read each and every individual comments. But if y'all go back and read the comments, you know, we we definitely had a lot of good insight in there as well. So I think this is a start. Uh, the Glocksdown movement, like I said, make sure you go to that page. Um, and, and once again, John, I'm here for you. Whatever you need me, me to too. do. As well, well, I'll be in touch with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, the woman to woman uh, movement. Moon let me let me let me do this insert. Let me, June the 10th, we're doing the community union stop the violence event at at Miniwell Park. We submitted our request for our, our request today so we can get the permit. As soon as I figure, as soon as they let us know whether or not the permit will be granted, I will be sitting having flyers. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Best and Mr. Morgan, I hope that y'all can join us. Anybody that's on this live, that's a male. The women, you can come in and assist, but that's a male that would like to stand up and be counted and have something five or six minutes that they would like to share with the community. Please, all are welcome. It's not not a woman's event is basically for the community, but we need our men to step up and be counted, and we're gonna allow y'all to give y'all a space where y'all can do so. And Richard will be handling that side. All right, and just I'm gonna, I'm gonna just let each each individual start with Mr. Morgan, uh, in in with a you know uh, comment or you know some insight or you know anything that you guys have planned uh, in this regard. Um. I won't say a lot because it's a lot been said, but I will end with one of the things that I, I think is instrumental and I think it's even something that may be missing in church is the mentorship. It's yeah. like discipleship to me. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes yeah. being able to walk with the kids because I volunteer, I actually volunteer with a group at Wayne Academy. We go there on Tuesdays and we talk to some of the students there. Um, mm -hmm. But I, and I was, and we were talking earlier, like so many kids, I was, the guy was 14 and he said he knew one person that wanted to kill him at age 14 because he oh, was in the game, which blew my mind when he said that. So I think our ability to also to be in where they had, create a safe space for them That's to come, right. because some of the conversations they had, I guarantee they wouldn't have with their parents, but it's a safe space for them and they're able to come in and talk. So I think us having the ability to mentor and take the time, and that's something I'm really diligent about. I love mentoring. Um, I think that, and I even think that is something that you can carry in from the body. Because mentorship is the same as discipleship. And if you know that Jesus walked with his people for three years. That's right. So we have to learn to walk That's with good. our kids. So I will, end, I will end with that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Mr. Mr. Bless. Yeah. Um, I, I think this has been a great discussion, a great opportunity to, 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 to dialogue with all of you. Um, like I said, I've, Met 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 two new friends tonight. I'll I'll say that, um, and and so I, I just I just look forward to um, just being able to be a part of whatever's going on um, that's going to um, uh, incorporate um, souls being saved and souls being added to the kingdom. Right. Um, any any, right. any anything that I could do uh, from that standpoint, I'm 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 all in. Um, you guys give me dates of what what you got going on, and I definitely try to do all I can uh, to be in attendance and to be active in whatever is going on. Um, because again, it's going to take um, all of us 
Uh, mm -hmm. They have a heart for heart for God and a heart for God's people to get involved in what's going on. Um, and just play our part wherever, wherever wherever we are. I just believe that wherever we go, um, we're carrying Christ with us. And I believe that God will allow our paths to cross with people who um, uh, uh, we will have the opportunity to have an impact uh, on their lives, whether it be at our job, whether it be in the grocery store, whether it be at the gas station, uh, whether it be in schools, wherever it is, um, our mandate is to let our light shine. Uh, and we're surrounded by a lot of dark. Yeah. So um, we just, uh, for every opportunity to be able to um, just be a part of whatever you guys got going on, um, just to be able to share the love of Christ with anybody that's willing to receive it. Amen. Amen. All right. Mr. Lane. Oh, uh, yes. Um, uh, first of all, a great panel. I appreciate everybody being up here, man. Um, I, I had a great time talking to y'all. Um, uh, and I, I soon maybe about a week i'm gonna do another live i'm gonna start the process of breaking down uh stage by stage how the glock down movement is going to go about trying to um uh, uh uh endeavor to um to 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 to, to diminish gun violence through economic empowerment um step-by-step -step program um but i'll be sure to come on and let let, let, let y'all know um exactly um when i'm gonna air it uh or whatever um and um, I, I just, I really appreciate the panel tonight, man. I really do. And so, yeah. Thank you so much. And lastly, but certainly not least, Ms. Fussell. <laughs> I thank you again, Richard, for having me on. Everybody knows me when I get this. I'm, I'm just passionate about, uh, you know, being in my community and making a difference. You know, I want my work to speak for me. And when I stand before God on that glorious day, he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You know, well, that's how that's that's why I'm passionate because I live my life to live again. Um, I also want to take the time to thank my administrative assistant, which is Mrs. Tracy Best, that does all the behind the scenes. And yeah, Brandy yeah. Matthews, she is the counselor for district number four, city council for district number four in Goldsboro. She is really helping us and pushing um some things too to try to help us get the permit. I just want to thank them, you know, for all the uh, beside, behind the scenes work, you know, that they're doing. And I just believe that it's not too late for our kids. Um, I believe if we stay steadfast and unmovable, that God will lead all of us, you know, in the right direction to do what we need to do. We just have to have an ear to hear what he's saying to the church and not the building, but us as individuals. We just have to, like you said, Richard, not give up on these kids. And we're together, you know, we'll have our ups and our downs along the way and we'll have our disagreements and our conversations. But as long as we stay steadfast and unmovable, I believe that there is going to be a remnant that's going to come in and a change is going to come for the city of Goldsboro and surrounding areas. And I just thank y'all for allowing me the opportunity to be present. All right. Now, I just once again want to thank everybody who tuned in via Facebook, YouTube, and the radio. Uh, we're going to, you know, probably continue this discuss discussion sometime soon. And we're going to, uh, you know, move forward with all of the events. But I pray that this has been enlightening. I, I pray that this has inspired someone as well you know to 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 take their place in the community i definitely hope it inspired men to you know kind of step up and, and do what is needed you know to you know to kind of to to, to 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 just rectify you know once again as as mike best said you know and first you know to to take control of ours you first have to bind the strong man up so yes, you know, yes. have to bind by by many by many by many things, but now it's time to be loose and take our place. So I thank y'all. Good night. God bless y'all. And we will see y'all <laughs> next week. Y'all have a good night. Love, love you all. All right, y'all. All right. All right.